I'm Frankie McCarthy, a LEGO fan who's exhibited displays for over seven years and ran a LEGO YouTube channel for three. However, despite how much LEGO means to me, I hide my passion. I'm setting myself the challenge of uploading a photo of the display behind me to my Instagram and finally coming out to the world about my love for the hobby. I'm also going to be linking my YouTube channel, which fills me with dread, as it's something that I've hidden for years. I'm also going to be speaking to my dad and other LEGO fanatics to discover exactly what it means to be a LEGO nerd. I think LEGO is sort of the opportunity to be sort of very creative, like just because LEGO hasn't officially made it doesn't mean you can't. It's about creativity and uh, recapturing my childhood. If I've had a bad day at work or I'm a bit stressed or I just need to chill and relax, I take myself off to the LEGO room and I just build. LEGO is, for me, LEGO's work. Um, I run a business which runs um, LEGO workshops. Like a lot of kids, from a very young age, LEGO captured my imagination and captivated me for hours at a time. However, when I was 10, at an age when most kids were growing out of the toy, my dad became an athole. We are big kids, I suppose, aren't we? Um, so an adult fan of LEGO, um, someone who's willing to admit that they really enjoy playing with Lego as an adult. It's a it's a kind of social life with Lego shows around the country. You can be away a lot of weekends every month if you wanted to be. It means you have a double life. It means you have some amazing friends uh, where you go off to shows and you see other people's builds and you have a whole community which is fabulous. And then you have your other life where people look at you strange if you mention the word Lego. However, my dad's new hobby quickly began to spiral out of control and before long, what had started off as a couple of sets became hundreds of sets, thousands of minifigures and hundreds of thousands of pieces. I don't think I'm obsessed with Lego now, but there was a time when, yes, I, I know I was. It takes up enough of my time for me to say that I am, in a way. Like, it's very much something I do think about a lot and I'm thinking, when's the next set? Does it look good? Stuff like that. I probably was spending too much time on my phone buying and selling Lego and swapping Lego and talking about Lego and sharing pictures and taking pictures. And... It's something I think about constantly and I'm al I always have a couple of projects to build. It has taken over my life a bit, so I guess obsessed is probably the right word, <laughs> yeah. We then discovered Lego Facebook groups where affles from all over the world come together to share their builds, talk and argue about the tiny plastic bricks. I think I would consider myself to be a part of the LEGO community because I very much um, do animate. I really like the freedom and sort of expression because I might not be able to go out and find five actors, but I can find five figures ridiculously easy. So I'm a member of um, a few LUGs, um, so they organise shows and meetups. You know, there's members all over the world, so um, I probably speak to them a lot more than some of my family members. Every year throughout the country, there are hundreds of LEGO exhibitions showing off the amazing creations of Affles. Through Facebook, we got the opportunity to build a display for one of these events. Together, my dad and I built a Western layout and I was hooked. I immediately began building my own models, which soon became huge layouts. I decided to sell my childhood LEGO to fund my ambitious displays, known in the community as mocks. I love um, that, that little word in itself, mock. Um, my own creation so it's it's the absolute essence of Lego isn't it you don't have to build what the instruction says you can build whatever you can imagine like if you think it you can probably build it so mocking as an adult is you know such a direct extension of what you did as a child using the brick to just express your own creativity and um, if you put all of your bricks together in a mock you can just the, the, the limit is your imagination, isn't it? You can keep going. It's nice not to have to rely on technology sometimes. If I'm building a set, I have to, I'm in the instructions, bam, bam, bam. And it has to, even to the point where everything has to be facing the right way and absolutely spot perfect. And then when it's built, I'll look at it and possibly modify a little bit and move a little bit and then think, oh, I could add that in. When I first started high school, Lego was a part of my identity. However, by the age of 13, I stopped appearing in the pictures of my builds. It was almost like, I didn't want there to be any proof that I'd built them. Lego had previously been something that I'd shouted from the rooftops about, but it quickly became something that even my close friends forgot I did. I wrestled with accepting who I was and began changing myself to fit in more. I didn't really fit in in school. 
no, not not especially. I think I did find it quite sort of hard too because you're very much in sort of secondary school environment and stuff like that. Because in primary school, it's cool to like Lego, but then when you hit secondary school, it's it becomes a bit iffy. Like, will people find me weird? So, um, I was probably one of the you know weird kids or <laughs> nerds or something like that. I never really quite fitted in anywhere. I had one or two close friends, but not a big group of friends. I still had Lego as a teenager. My parents thought I should grow up and, and get out of it. And I think they eventually they realized probably that I wasn't going to. Once you sort of get to 12 and you get to high school, it's definitely not something that you would speak to other people about. And it was definitely in the bedroom and hidden. If friends came to play, it was like away sort of thing. So yeah, I think I'd, I I did hang on to it a lot longer than um, I let people know I'd hung on to it for. Through school, I heard that I liked not just Lego, but Star Wars, Marvel, Harry Potter, Lord of the Rings, and anything else that might make people think I was a nerd. I suppose I am a nerd, yeah, probably. I suppose, I feel like I'd consider myself a very modern day definition of the word, as opposed to sort of, you know, the 90s, college films with the Americans and stuff like that, like very much the the new meaning and not the, you know, the one who's getting the head shoved in the toilet, stuff like that. That's the other thing as well, being a female and building with Lego, I think as far as the AFOL community is concerned, absolutely, you know, you know, very accepting and there's lots of women. I think outside of that, Lego is a boy's toy and I still think there's a lot of preconceptions on that. I think that's a generation thing and I think as they, those younger ones grow up, I think that it will become less and less. I wouldn't pay too much attention to what other people are saying about it. There's nothing but positivity to come from just accepting who you really are and, um, and moving on from there really. Don't hide it, but don't, don't let other people tell you what you can and can't like because you are your own person and at the end of the day, Lego is for anybody. I'm hitting the streets of my local city, Leicester, to find out what everyday people think of my hobby. What is the first word that pops into your head to describe this? Big. Dedication is the first word that comes into my mind. Yeah. Discipline. <laughs> yeah, trust me, that that is insane. Nature? Battle. What is it? A castle? A jungle? Castle yeah. and jungle. Combat. Castle yeah. and jungle, innit? Uh, Windsor Castle. Uh, Harry Potter. That is a jungle right Crazy. there. Crazy. That is mental. That is so sick. <laughs> How did you do that? And what's the first word to describe the person who made it? Uh, it's creative. Uh, honestly, like, out, Hard out, of, out of this world. Like, generally. Detail. Dedication, probably. Unbelievable. Creative. Triumphant. Detail oriented. Dedicated. You have grit and resilience. Grit and resilience. Perseverance, man. So I actually built this and I hide my passion for building Lego. Do you think I should hide it? No. 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 No, absolutely not. No. No, man. Not at all, bro. No way, bro. No way. No, no way. My Instagram followers are mostly made up of people I went to school with. The very same people that I hide my hobby from. Yesterday, I plucked up the courage to press share on a post to change that. And now, I'm going to take a look at the comments. When I was doing my street interviews, as soon as I mentioned the word Lego, people's eyes lit up and I got just as a positive reaction from Instagram as well. It's been quite a cathartic process speaking to other Lego fans and finding out that they had quite a similar experience to me at school and felt like they had to hide it. But to any Lego fans or anyone with any weird or quirky hobbies or anything about them that sets them apart from the norm, I feel like you shouldn't hide it. We all need to embrace who we are, embrace our quirks, embrace our hobbies, and not hide them. I feel like I've learned that the word nerd is actually positive, and that I've kind of accepted who I am. And I'd say that now, I'm proud to say that I am a Lego nerd. <laughs> uh, yes, we are Lego nerds. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. It's one of those things where if you want to identify as like a Lego nerd, that's fine. I feel like I personally would. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's fair enough, isn't it? Couches as Lego nerds. <laughs>